Hi, thanks for joining us here at Artist Empowerment TV. We're here to bring you interviews with artists from around the globe so they can share with you some of their experience and some of their wisdom on how they live life and thrive as professional artists. So, enjoy. Uh, my name is Laura Marks. I am an illustrator, a drawer. Um, I specialize in pen and ink, and I do animal-based work that is uh, usually more of like the beautiful grotesque. You're based in St. Louis, but you sell your work worldwide, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I uh, certainly do not sell work in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I tend to sell things on the, the West Coast and, and sometimes in New York. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about um, two or three things that uh, you can point to. They could be habits, they could be principles, they could be beliefs are just things that sort of like are fuel for you to continue to create and things that are fuel for you to actually uh, market yourself and keep you going in that way. The first one would be that um, I, I believe that if you don't constantly make me work, no one's going to care about you. And uh, because you don't make me think, no one's going to see them. No, no one's going to care about work you did 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And so I, I get kind of like paranoid about it and so I'm constantly making new things. Uh -huh. Especially with the social media age nowadays, you, you have to be constantly making something. People want that. Uh -huh. um, and then I, I think another thing too that keeps me going is uh, that my art has not been very respected in like an academic sense, especially by professors and uh, school and, and some other artists. They don't really respect my work too much. Yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting that you say that because I just talked to Stu, the last guy I interviewed, and he was, uh, one of the things he pointed to is kind of like a rebellion, you know? He's like, uh, you got to have a little bit of fuck you in you, you know? And for me, yeah. it's I've had that same experience, you know? It's like when people tell me I'm not going to make it or I can't do this and... There's always been that little like fire inside of me that's like, you know what? Fuck you! Like I'm gonna do this, and this is gonna happen. You know? Uh huh. A week ago, told me the same thing. I'm not gonna make it, and that I'm not going to be an artist. So I had a lot of people tell me even before they looked at my work because of my age that I'm not going to make it. He said you weren't gonna make it. He said I wasn't gonna make it unless he said. I stopped being a pussy and went to grad school um, or moved. And that, that apparently going to grad school and moving suddenly makes me a better artist. I do want to say something about that because I think that's important. There's a great example of an artist here. His name is Alphonse Mucha. And I don't know if you know the name, but yeah. But he's the father of Art Nouveau. And he had, uh, there's a story, one of the professors said that to him. He said that. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of money in the arts, and at that time there was. But there's also just too much talent, and you're not gonna you should try it. You should do something else. And uh, he ultimately, in his own way, said "fuck you," and he kept making, and uh, he completely changed the face of art, and he created Art Nouveau, an entire movement. So yeah, his his advice didn't apply to a lot of people, uh -huh. but he also wasn't willing to look at my art. Um, and that, that's pretty common. Like, you know, I didn't even like single him out, but it, it is something that I've experienced a lot. And it's just about the uh, Let's give him the benefit of the doubt because I think that you know, for me, I know that when I look at your work, I mean, it's like it doesn't matter. And I, I really don't want to. I, I really don't want to uh, blow your bubble up too much because I know people do this all day. But really, when I look at your work, I mean, each time I look at it, it always has an impact on me, you know? And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen that piece, like, it always, for some reason, it always has a different kind of impact, and I'm always impressed when I see it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that if he would have seen your work, he, he probably would have had a different statement. Or what are some other things? I mean, uh, aside from uh, trying to stay relevant and continue making all, all the time, is there anything else that you can point to that really uh, that you're very confident about, like a you know the prince a principle or a concept that you you stick to? I I had a lot of where I decided to make this my life. So I guess 
thing that used to work me a lot is trying to work at like a job, you know, like a nine to five. Uh huh. But I don't really have much of like a kind of like a confidence booster, you know, fire under my ass kind of thing because I've never really had time to stop and think about it. Uh huh. You know, the the biggest, uh, I guess the, the best way to constantly make work is to constantly have deadlines. Uh huh. <laughs> and so I constantly have deadlines, and so it. I've never really stopped to think about it. What do you think is the purpose of your work? What I mean by that is, like, how is the world going to be a different place because of your work? I would say it has a lot to do with the genre, and it's just a, a big challenge of what re, uh, respected contemporary art is. And, you know, the drive to make something like animal illustrative art respected. It's mm-hmm. something that isn't. And I, I think that's like hopefully what ends up happening by the end of everything is that there are more people respecting to make uh, more form like mine. Um, people are illustrators not necessarily a little bit just, uh, you know, a little bit more of the, the kitsch grunge kind of stuff. <laughs> more respected. So can you can you tell the people watching and me, I'm learning as well, about things that you do that um, yeah, that position you as a professional artist. Mainly it, it has become my life and I feel like when you're when you're in that, that zone of being a professional artist it has to become your life and and it has a hardship to make no money and but I, I can't get a job. I don't have time for it, so I just spend every day, all day, working on art. And I, you know, I, I do have a website, and you bug everybody on social media constantly. And and yeah, you just have to make it your job, your full-time job, and realize you're putting in 60 to 80 hours a week, and you're not going to get paid. And it's scary, but that's, I think what it takes. But you've been picked up by you've been you've had some some uh, press you had you've had some sales so yeah. tell me a little bit about that. I got very lucky with the press and, and I know it's luck because I was just in college still and, and basically I got a daily deviation on deviant art and Dutch if I picked up my work uh, which you know I still have a deviant art page so that that ended up making. My, I would say like my experience of press and shows out of the norm, and that uh, I've, I've never really submitted to a show, and and so I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I, I know that before I started with my current work, I was still in college trying to submit that work. I never got anything, and that's always just hard um, But since then, I, I've never really had to too much work, and I, I'm always scared that's not going to happen, you know, eventually, I'm going to have to learn how to email a gallery, um, <laughs> but, you know, especially if you make drawings, you can't price them very high, especially in the market that I'm in, you would think $2,000 for a drawing is awesome, but then you realize the gallery takes 50%, and framing's $100, and shipping $100, and and you come back with with nothing. Um, I think I, I did a show recently where I sold seven thousand dollars worth of work, and by the end of it, I only made thousand dollars in profit. That was five months of work. Wow. Uh, and that that's what it's like. And unless you can become a huge name and charge an ungodly amount of money for your work, the the galleries just take it out. And I understand, you know, they have to support themselves as well. I don't blame them. But people don't realize that when sign up for this, that, and then, like, what you were saying with marketing yourself in school, they don't teach you anything. Yeah. They don't teach you that galleries will take anywhere between 30 and 60 percent, and if you're in the pop arts realist genre, they're going to take 50, that's across the board. Let me ask you about that experience. You you had $7,000 in sales, and what what did you learn from that? I mean, did the gallery take 50, and then you spent money on shipping, and you were you were responsible for all the shipping and framing costs. Yes. 
I was uh, I was responsible for the shipping out, and luckily I have a really good deal on that. I shipped a uh, eighty-five pound crate for three hundred dollars, but uh, that was still three hundred dollars I didn't have. Uh-huh. And and then framing for all the pieces was like thousand dollars itself. Uh huh. And and then taking the half, you know. Like, what could you have done differently to position yourself in a better place with that experience? In your contract, you have to pay for it yourself. Uh, the buyer does pay for this, you know, the legality pays for shipping with someone buys it. But I, I, the only really way to avoid it is to up the value of your artwork. Mm-hmm. This brings up a really good point. I mean, you're you're talking about within the context of the contemporary art scene and the gallery scene, and I think that the internet has opened things up, and the and technology has changed things a lot, of, even in the last ten years. And you know, I talked to Craig Downs, I and mean, he's been an artist for thirty years, and he's managed to make a life from it. So what he does is he hangs his stuff in, you know, in coffee shops or, you know, uh, hangouts or whatever. And then it, it's like very accessible and it's all very affordable. For me, it seems like the gallery model is almost getting phased out or it's an old model now. You know, a lot of the work, even in Prague, in the middle of Bohemia, you know, this, this kind of neighborhood with spray paint everywhere. There's these fine art galleries and there are these really pristine white places and most of the shows that they have in there are really just visual uh, visual philosophy. There's no real like hand in it. Most people don't go to look at that stuff. You know, it's a small community of people all dressed in black inside this white box yeah. gallery and like puts a border in between the people and the work. And a theme that I've been seeing with people I've been interviewing lately is that um, they want to take that border down. And, and I think it's important to make it accessible. The internet helps with that, but, but I don't know. I mean, how do you feel about the gallery model these days? I think it's outdated. Um, I and mean, I think, you know, I understand that galleries need to make money, but I, I think 50% is a little unfair. Nowadays, you don't really, there's no guarantee you're gonna make any money at all. And so I think for a gallery, I teach them like 50 or 60%. I know some galleries are too 60 and I, I just won't work with them. In, in the kind of dexterous, high frequency world of galleries, you get a lot of foot traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my show in May had, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand people show up that night and been out of the place. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, got one sale off the floor, but the other guy I was showing with, He's so close to his work when people walk in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's an exception. And then a lot of galleries do your show, you can't show somewhere else in a certain time frame where you can't show the entire region, especially if you're represented. I mm-hmm. think that's crazy mm-hmm. and not fair. Almost like stripping you of your freedoms as an artist, which kind of goes against everything that art, for me anyway, is about. And, you know, I, I do agree with Brandon as far as like them charging the 50%. I mean, they do provide, you know, they do provide people, they do provide a space, they do provide advertisement and everything. So, of course, you know, it, it makes sense that they, they charge 50 or 60% or whatever. But then, you know, you have to ask yourself, do I want to be a gallery artist or do I want to be an entrepreneur? It maybe is a more realistic word. Yeah. Do I want to be an entrepreneurial artist or do I want to have someone pimping me out? You know, it's like, do I want to pimp myself out or do I want to have somebody else pimping me out? And I think that, you know, the artists that really kind of grab a hold of their careers and say, I'm going to do it. And they, they, they have their own YouTube channel. They have their own, sometimes they get their own gallery. They have their own website. They sell work out. They have their own art parties. Um, I've seen people really go far with that. Yeah, that's something I would, I would like to get into. Um... You know, no one may read my show at galleries at all, it's just that the galleries are good for press. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all very well respected galleries. Like, I can't wait for the day where I can just go, I only want to do solo shows, and just do, you know, two shows a year, and just make my own art and sell it, mm-hmm. art and stuff to myself. Uh, that would be amazing. 
Well, this kind of brings up the, the another option, I think, is, is to have an agent. I don't know if that's the right word, but um, someone who, who does the press for you and, and sort of acts as your representative, uh, not a gallery, but like an independent agent. Yeah. Um, I mean, because people like who do really a time intensive work like you do, I mean, if you work eight hours a day, chances are you're probably not going to want to spend another three hours, you know, putting together a marketing package every day and, yeah. and managing all of your contacts. So um, have you ever considered anything like that uh, to, to free you up from all of the accounting stuff and all of the, the other crap that goes into it? I, I would really love to have someone like that. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe when the interview gets out, someone will watch the interview and say, I want to be her agent. If I was an agent, you would be my first client. If you want to be another agent, <laughs> I'm here. Um, um, I'm going to send you... Um, I'm gonna send you the name of a book. It's called How to How to Survive and Prosper as an Artist Without Selling Your Soul. Have you heard of this book? No. Are you serious? <laughs> oh, the woman's great. I don't. I think her name is like Carol Mitchell. Yeah, I encourage everyone watching to check out that book. That was actually the first book that sort of segued me into. Um, like an art student into like a professional artist because I thought, oh my god, this is like the class that I never got, you know? Yeah, I, I, I hope that changes soon in, in art school, but they actually teach you business side. And so far, I mean, I've only been doing this for three years, and I learned a lot by making a lot of mistakes that could have been avoided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they don't teach you any of it. And I, I don't know if it's I feel like it's almost like a, a nationwide thing. It's just not something they they discuss. Mm -hmm. How do you email guys when they're writing grants? How do you write a proposal? Uh -huh. You know, I don't know how to do any of those still, and uh, that's just going to be trial and error. I think that art school is still okay as long as someone gets the education. Maybe there's one class per year, and that teaches them something about the professional side of it. And then when they graduate, they've already applied to a bunch of galleries, and they've already, you know, they've already kind of started getting their name out there. I agree completely. I agree. We've we've talked with artists who have taken nine to five jobs, and a lot of people. Um, and this is one of the things in this book that I, I really like uh, is that she says that you don't have to get a nine to five job. Like that's a, also a myth. You know, like, and people, and we've talked to other artists, and it doesn't have to be like that. I mean, there are definitely, there is definitely a strategy that you can take to be a full time artist and make a full living off of that, a full and happy living. It's more about just having that mentality of, you know, maybe you need to shop for cheaper food or something like that. It's doable, it's doable, I'm doing it. So, what is your message to the person who knows they want to move? on into the field of being an artist and, and making at least half of their income off of that. Embrace social media. Be almost annoying on it. Be on everything you could possibly be on. From Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, DeviantArt even when you're starting out. Just bother people. I mean, judge those with the DeviantArt. <laughs> no one would have ever thought that. Submit your work to everything. Everything uh -huh. you can find, even if they don't even take the minute for it, do it anyway. Uh -huh. Don't waste me the practice. I'm happy with a good set. I have like my, my, my folder of things to send out to people that are all like 72 DPI or images in the folder, and I'll just pop them into an email, send them out. You know, just bother people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, submit to Jeff's first, submit to Jeff's first, you never know. What I hear when you say that is, uh, I hear like, don't. Uh, try not to see, try not to create boundaries in your mind where there are no boundaries. I mean, I think people say, oh, well, that's a f famous artist, so, like, they're never going to, I'm never going to get in contact with them. Or oh, that magazine is, like, way too popular for me. Like, I'll, I, I just shouldn't try. And it's like, well, what do you have to lose? If you have your package together already and all you have to do is copy and paste or put that file in an email, sure. do it. I started emailing artists recently because I, I thought, you know, they wouldn't care. And uh, it turns out a lot of them are incredibly friendly and very helpful. And definitely email artists. You know, it doesn't hurt. A lot of them with Josh Keys. I became friends with Josh Keys. <laughs> I'm just emailing him. Yeah. And 
And like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to do those things. And, and people also need to be very realistic. You're not going to make a whole lot of money to start, but you have to be willing to deal with that. And it's not that hard. You know, it's, maybe you get a part-time job or something to help out in the meantime, but it's worth it. You know, it's better than, you know, being, you know, 50, 60 years old in an office job going, I wish I had tried. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned social media, and that's that's such a huge thing. I'm, I'm really glad that you said that because I was going to bring that up anyway. That's where people are looking at images these days, period. These days, the gallery is starting to become phased out, and people's gallery and people's attention is in their phone, and it's in social media. When you start to utilize social media, um, you know, you got to make sure that you're st- you're staying up with current events as well. Well, you can get around the world in that way overnight if you do it right. So I think if you embrace YouTube and you en- embrace technology, uh, that is an important part of, of marketing and getting your name out there. Absolutely. Uh, most of the art I sell is through Facebook. Really? Yeah, yeah uh, my Facebook page is where I sell most of my art. Okay. Even, even the guy that Don't tell like, Facebook that. They're going to want to cut. They're going to want 50%. Yeah, they ain't going to <laughs> uh, the, the, the guy who, who collects my work, sort of, the guy that um, owns two of my most well known pieces, uh, found me through Facebook and he started collecting my work. And he's all the way in Australia. Great. And, and you can get, and you know, all it takes is one person from one country to like your stuff, and all their friends will like it. So you'll get this huge range of, uh, I have people all over the world that look at my own work all the time. Mm-hmm. And People like how to press and drop stones. They love to follow Tumblr. Just tell everybody, they follow Tumblr. Make a nice Tumblr with just your art on it. They will probably find it. I want to say one more thing too about social media, and th- and it's really changed the model of, um, or it's changed kind of the logic model of the way business works. And whether you want to admit it or not, you know, your art is a business. It really is about like sharing your audience with people as well. I mean, if you know, if you have a Facebook page and you find someone's work that's similar to yours but you think it's good and you like it, then you're sh- that you're sharing your audience with that person, but then that person's is also all of their friends are going to also see your page. And I don't think people quite like people who aren't really familiar with the way social media works and the way like um, everything is connected in like this big web. Um, maybe maybe you don't get that, but but when you help someone, you it's almost like instant karma. I mean, you get that back right away. If you if you, sh- if you like someone's work who has ten thousand friends, you have twenty thousand friends now. Being online a lot too with my third blog, it's kind of how it works. They share your artwork, and in turn, you get thousands, and sometimes. You know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people will see your artwork mm-hmm. and they'll go back and like your page. Sure, they don't link directly to your Facebook, but people will find it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They go crazy about it. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely worth it. And you must embrace social media. I feel like a lot of a lot of the older artists are fading out because they're not embracing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that that's, that's good advice. Uh, yeah, it's it's been awesome talking with you, and um, definitely thank you for your time. And for everyone watching out there, uh, if you enjoyed this interview, make sure you subscribe below. We're going to have all of the links in the description to Lauren's work and her website and everything that we can cram in there is going to be down there. Do you have a, a place where people can buy your prints online? I have an Etsy shop. Uh huh. So the Etsy shop will be below if you want to check out her amazing, amazing, timeless work. Go down and check that out for sure. And yeah, so thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for uh, you know sharing your experience with all of the, the people out there who who need it and who need the encouragement and who need the the advice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll see you next time, everyone. Stay tuned. Bye.